She's got long legs and short shorts, but she ain't got no teeth. She wears a red bandana on her head, and she smiles so, so sweet. She'll steal your heart, a very first step should rip apart your soul. She'll torture your mind and waste your time and drag you down the road. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Cause she's a Jezebel, St. Andrew Jezebel. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to the St. Andrew's Jezebel podcast. You're listening to Season 2, Episode 4. My name is Ashley, and I am a third-generation Panama City native. I'm a singer-songwriter, and I'm also a Floriopolis volunteer. This week, we're going to be going over community events for the week of February 3rd through the 9th. Our salty local guest is Sarah Griffith. If you spent time at St. Andrews recently, you might have noticed that many of the windows are often beautifully painted. Chances are that might have been done by Sarah. She's also been active in the mural movement here in Bay County, and I'm excited to share our talk with you. For our old news segment this week, I've got an article from the St. Andrews Bay News called The St. Andrews Awakening. This one was published this week in history in 1920. We've got a great show ahead. Bundle up, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. All right, here's the community events for this week. Starting on Thursday, join the folks from the city of Panama City and historic St. Andrews on Thursday, February 3rd, 2022 at 5.30 p.m., for a community meeting discussing the St. Andrews Marina Bulkheads and Utilities Project. This project is the first phase in rebuilding the St. Andrews Marina. It includes repair of the damaged bulkheads and replacement of the underground utilities of the marina. At the meeting, engineers with Moffat and Nickel will give a presentation outlining the project's scope, timeline, and the construction phasing. The second phase will include replacement of the docks and the boat slips. The meeting will be held at the Panama City Publishing Company Museum, located at 1134 Beck Avenue. Thursday night is also a collaboration night at the Library on Beck. This is a wonderful time for you to test out your new songs that you may have written. Maybe you'll find your new songwriting partner. They've got a great selection of beer and wine and a wonderful atmosphere filled full of books. Highly recommend it. Moving on to Friday, are you a BC, also known as Before Computers? The Panama City Publishing Company Museum will once again host a special day for you each month of the winter. On the first Friday of each month, from February until May, you will have exclusive access to the museum from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. Come and see what's new, enjoy the monthly exhibits, talk about old St. Andrew's history, and have a cup of coffee. Later in the day at the Panama City Publishing Museum, there is the historic walking tour with Ellen that starts at 1 o'clock. And then in the evening, if you're ready for tacos and music, then catch one of Bay County's best songwriters, Anthony Peebles, at the Little Village at 6 p.m. Saturday, there's the market at St. Andrews. That's in the Smith Yacht Basin, which is the lot next to the shrimp boat. They've got all kinds of arts, crafts, vendors, and sometimes they have other activities, too. There is always live music that's brought to you by Floriopolis that begins at 10 a.m., so bring some cash for tipping. Let's move on to Sunday. There is brunch at Alice's. I believe it starts at about 10.30. I highly recommend the Bloody Mary. It's delicious. And also the shrimp and grits. I would say that their shrimp and grits is about as good as my mother's. And in my opinion, my mother's is the best. So be sure to check out their Bloody Marys and their shrimp and grits. And they usually have music on Sundays as well, too. So great atmosphere all around. If you slept in, then also on Sunday, there is an open mic hosted by Arlie Scarborough at 1 p.m. at Little Village. Bring your instruments, bring your friends, drink some craft beers, maybe do a little shopping, enjoy the view over Lake Ware, and either participate or listen to the local musicians play their songs. Sunday evening would be a great night to visit Uncle Ernie's and try their new drink, especially in this cold weather we're having. It is called the Honey Sage Hot Toddy. 
That sounds lovely. Go try it for me. Moving on to Monday, there's Monday Night Little Fest at the Tap Room, which is hosted by a different musician every week. And it starts at six and they usually go about nine. They've got several wonderful craft beers at the Tap Room. The atmosphere is always laid back. They have beautiful fire pits. There's almost always a food truck there. Not entirely sure of their food truck schedule, but I'm sure if you check out their Facebook page, you'll find more information there. Monday Night Little Fest is a wonderful opportunity for you to see some of Bay County's very best musicians and also for musicians to come out and meet others who you may wish to collaborate with someday. On to Tuesday, they've got trivia at Tap Room. I'm not sure of the time. Visit their Facebook page. They may have some information there or shoot them a message and I'll let you know what time it starts. Now we're on Wednesday. There's public hours at Floriopolis to work on the next art exhibit on Janie's Fence. Just show up at Floriopolis, located at 1131 Beck Avenue, between noon and 5 to paint. Floriopolis provides the canvas and paint, and all you got to do is show up and be creative. This is a good time to work on your piece for the next display on Janie's Fence. The upcoming is Paint Whatever You Like, inspired by a song lyric. So I was just thinking about this. How fun would it be to make a painting that is inspired by a lyric by one of our local songwriters? We have so many, and I'm sure everyone would enjoy it. Check out the new Mythical Creatures display, which should be on Janie's Fence, and that's located across from the captain's table. Some big events coming up that I should add are the 6th Annual Salty Dog Day event. They are celebrating all things dog in Salty St. Andrews, and this will be held Saturday, February 26th from 9 to 2 p.m. This dog-friendly event will be an extension of the Market of St. Andrews, with the proceeds benefiting Operation Spay Bay. Sox, the current Salty Dog Mayor of St. Andrews, will greet visitors to the market and will announce the new winner of the Salty Dog Mayor's Contest. The market will include unique Salty Dog t-shirts, dog merchandise, vendors, veterinarians, treat stations, dog food play area, food, music, shopping and entertainment, as well as a blessing of the dogs, adoptions, and a silent auction. The week following will be the 25th annual St. Andrew Mardi Gras Festival hosted by the crew of St. Andrews. It's the most popular and largest Mardi Gras celebration in Bay County. Come see over 14 crews and over 30 brightly colored floats. As festive music is played along the route, tens of thousands of beads and doubloons will be tossed to the crowd of over 50,000 people. It's the perfect excuse to visit Panama City, Florida. The two-day parade and festival in historic St. Andrews is filled with food, fun, and music. VIP tickets are available while supplies last. Visit standrewsmardigras.com for more information. That's all the community events I've got for this week. Tune in next week for more. One of the best things about St. Andrews is that you can see live music every day. That's right. There is live music being played somewhere in St. Andrews seven nights a week. Fortunately, my friend Ken Schaefer creates and publishes a weekly schedule for St. Andrews as well as most of Bay County. Ken's spreadsheet schedule is updated often when there's any changes. Ken also shares individual music events and is walking the walk and talking the talk when it comes to supporting live music. Not only does Ken supply the music schedules, but he attends several music performances a week and takes fantastic photos of the musicians. As a working musician myself, I feel blessed to have Ken and his wife Donna as treasured members of our local musical family. Make sure you like and follow Ken's page, Salty Sounds in St. Andrews, and Oh Boy Music on Facebook, so that you'll always know where all the live music will happen. Thank you so much, Ken, for everything you do. We're here today with Sarah Griffith of Enjoy Art by Sarah. So you call your business Enjoy Art by Sarah. How did you become an artist, Sarah? I've been drawing since I was a kid. When I was about 12 years old, the art instruction schools that used to be on the TV came on a commercial. My mom had called them. They sent the test. I tried it out. It was before phones and internet a whole lot. So they flew someone in from Indianapolis, signed me up. By the time I was 12, I had 12 college credits, but I've never gone to college. I've just been drawing forever, so just rogue artist, I guess. <laughs> That's amazing. So what's your favorite type of art? The ones that I created when I was younger were in high school a lot. So I would 
just doodle with black ink. And I call them thumbprints because they're like one of a kind, just like the pieces of art. So I would draw people's names. And if it was for you, like you're a musician, so I would incorporate stuff like that or where you're from. So I really like taking specific requests and just like combining it all and hiding it and making it look cool. So it's kind of like the new murals I'm working on with the postcard stamps to just stuff hidden all in them, like the personalized. That sounds like so much fun. Where are the new murals that you're creating at? They're everywhere. I have a couple downtown that I'm working on finalizing ideas. I just got back from New Orleans. I've got some in Mexico Beach, 30A. I've quoted some in Apalachicola. So this week I just finished up the one on the boat at Island Time on the beach. That's wonderful. And I was... You know, we have a mutual friend, Megan McDougal. I love Megan. She'll be on a week or two. Y'all went to New Orleans recently. How was your trip? What did you do there? It was awesome. So she was my lovely assistant. And when I originally booked the job, it was just the postcard stamp and the spare bedroom. They wanted some kind of jazz theme. I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do until I got there. I wanted to kind of talk to the owners. So we get there. Me and Megan are walking around, chatting with them. They wanted to put the postcard stamp in the bedroom. And I was like, well, you're not going to get all the action out of it that you want to get. So they moved the postcard stamp to the living room. And then the inside of the master bedroom, I did an accent wall. That's awesome. So you did a you did some mural work inside a private residence, huh? Yeah, most of my murals, I feel, have been private residence. Like a couple weeks ago, I had an author that has seven published books, I believe. And in her office, she wanted one of the chapters, like the page says the chapter and the page on it. So that was a pretty cool task, but my hand was seized up at the end after writing all the letters. That sounds really cool. And it sort of makes me think about what are the upcoming fence themes for Floriopolis, because it is paint whatever you like inspired by a song lyric. So I would imagine there'd be some words involved. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been doing murals in private residences? I've been doing art, obviously, my whole life. The murals first came probably 10-ish years ago. And for the most part, I haven't done a whole lot of businesses or outside. So most of mine have been in personal houses. That's wonderful. And so how do you, when you create art that is to be on public display, such as a mural or or the window art that right now y'all are painting all the windows in St. Andrews, how does that feel? I really just enjoy watching people get excited about art. So sometimes, like I've said, it's hard to put a price on things. I don't know how to price it out, but I just really, truly enjoy when I give someone a piece of art or they see, see one of my pieces of art and they just get super excited about it. That makes it all worth everything I do all day long. I saw some art of yours outside of tap room and the yoga place and it, it brought me glee. I loved it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The window project's pretty fun right now. I know I can't do all the Mardi Gras windows by myself. So I reached out to Heather at Floriopolis and asked her if maybe she thought it'd be cool if we could round up a bunch of artists and just paint all the windows at the same time and get it all knocked out. I think that's so exciting. What's your favorite part of the current mural movement downtown Panama City is undergoing and St. Andrews is just beginning? I'm super excited. So the best part is when I go to travel anywhere I go, I love to mural hunt. And our town just hasn't quite gotten to that point until Hurricane kind of gave the town a facelift and everyone started seeing different things. And it's just nice to have color and fun and people can find things to do. It's nice. It's nice. There's food and drink. Downtown is super awesome. I love what they're doing. And St. Andrew's always a cool art vibe. I'm shocked that there's not more murals here, like just secret people thrown up without asking permission. Heck yeah. I love the whole, I like rogue anything. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And and thanks to Jason Kretzer for all that he does. Oh my God. He's probably one of the coolest nicest guys on the planet and yeah like i don't think people realize all that he does on a daily basis just to help all these artists get seen it's pretty cool yes he's fantastic i got to interview him and tony simmons together about i don't know maybe six months ago and that was so fun i've never met tony in person tony's tony's interesting he's a fun person to talk to i bet people love him yeah 
So what led you to turn your gift into business? So the thumbprints that I drew, I drew them all in high school growing up, people's names. I still get pictures of them to this day. And then I waited tables for years. So servers carry their server books and people would cover them with stickers. So I would just get bored on my breaks and I would doodle my friends' names and they would tape it to their server books. So then I started doing all the servers' names and all the little fun things about them. Well, one of the girls was like, hey, I have my nephew's birthday coming up and he loves Dr. Seuss. And I wanted to see if you could hide, do the cat in the hat and hide everything in it, like his mom's name and where he was born and just everything, like his nickname that his family called him. So I was like, sure, not a problem. So I gave it to her and she said, how much? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, just have it. You're you're fine. You're my friend. Cool. She said, no, I'm going to pay you for this. What do you want to charge? Well, obviously I had no clue because I just want to give it away for free. So she bought my first piece of art and her family still to this day buy my art, her mom and her sisters. It's pretty cool. That is beautiful. Yeah. I love that. What's something that you wish the public knew about being an artist that they might not already be aware? It's taxing, very taxing on your body. If you're doing big jobs, of course, it's the obvious, but if you're even doing little jobs, like I used to sit at a desk and just hunch over and look at the tiny little details. So physically taxing and mentally draining, like your brain just never stops. And if I, I say this to people all the time, if I'm trying to go to sleep and I've got a vision of a octopus with blue tentacles in my brain, I cannot go to sleep until I put that octopus with blue tentacles, like either as a note or start to sketch it. It's just your brain never stops. That's the gospel right Right, here. right, right. <laughs> I have lost so much sleep over, you know, random tidbits that folks have spoken. I'm like, that's a lyric, but how do I spin it? And when you wake up from your dreams, from those tidbits, that's when, you know, you met, you might have something good and how really cool. The creative's curse. Yes. It's a blessing and a curse. Yes. What do you love about being an artist in St. Andrews? St. Andrews is one of my favorite areas in town. When we actually moved here when I was seven or eight, this was the very first place we lived. Dan's Pond was my bus stop. Yeah. so It was mine too. Was it? Yes. Uh, one, what grade, when did you graduate? I graduated in 04. 03. What? That's crazy. We were neighbors and didn't even know. So I just really, truly love the St. Andrews vibe. The owners are here are cool. I love Matt at Tap Room. I don't really even drink beer, but I like to just go in there, hang out with his employees and his wife is super sweetest lady on the planet and the musicians. I love going up there, listening to the music and I love a food truck more than people probably realize. I will hunt a food truck down. <laughs> oh, me too. I, I love Matt and Casey. I've, I've known them for about, I don't know, this is just a generous estimate, 15 years or yeah. so. They used to take care of, of my friend's son who was disabled. He's passed away now, but that's how I met them. And they're just wonderful, sweet people. And I love playing music at Tap Room. So I love that we share the love of that place. Yes. We've been through Hurricane Michael. We've been, we're still going through the pandemic. What do you think it will take to continue the artistic momentum that St. Andrews is currently building? Just kind of like I was saying, I think St. Andrews already has a pretty artsy vibe. Really just getting the merchants involved, Mm -hmm. getting the community involved. Like that was another reason why I thought about this window project is people will know there's artists out there if you bring them out. So it's been fun the last three days when you're standing outside and people walk by and they're always telling you great job or what's going on. What are you guys up to? I've met a few artists that I've known on the internet, but I got to meet them in person the last couple of days. So that's always really cool. So just keeping us out and about in the community and supporting us. And I don't think anything, any art's going anywhere in St. Andrews. It's here to stay. (laughs) I just love it. And I think that it's always been here, at least Mm -hmm. as long as I can remember. It was just in different capacities. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely hit a revival. What's it been like so far painting all the windows in St. Andrews with all the additional painters? Where windows have y'all covered? We have done feels like almost everything on the main strip from tap room down to Floriopolis. They're hitting the back half now with like the hobo and Alice's on Bayview. 
So it's just been nice to see the artist community coming together and working as a team. And do you have any uh, particular favorites that you've done along the way that you recommend folks check out? Just for the Mardi Gras ones? The ice cream, the yogurt shop down there. Heather had a cool idea and it was just open. So I went to town on her idea. So she designed it and I executed it. That one was a pretty fun one. It's cute. Can you describe the design? It's ice cream cones with Mardi Gras ice cream colors and sprinkles and music notes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love super cute. I love all things Mardi Gras. So anything new and exciting coming up other than window painting? Yeah, I've got the postcard stamp murals that I've been working on. I just completed the second one. I've got another one I'm designing and I start next week. And I've got the school project that I've been working on. The map, I call it maps. It's mural arts program and schools. I just, the art is going away in schools. They're taking away the music. They're mm-hmm. taking away the arts. So I figured if I could get in and help schools and work with the students, have them come up with the design and help them paint murals in their schools. So I did Lynn Haven Elementary and I had four students help me paint the entire mural and it was a blast. So more postcard murals and the school murals is kind of what I'm geared toward right now. That's fantastic. What's the mural in Lynn Haven looking like? That one I finished a couple months back. It's an eagle that one of the students designed. Lynn Haven eagles, yeah. Yeah. So the kid designed the eagle and then we did a blue backdrop and then instead of like the typical stars, stripes, flag, we did feathers with uh, red and white stripes. That's so creative. I love that y'all do that. That's awesome. And so how can folks reach you online and beyond and how might they contract you for art creation in their home or their business or anything else? I've got probably all the outlets you can think of. My cell phone, my email, my Instagram, my Facebook. I have probably way too much fun on the Tickle Talk is what I call it. My son is probably annoyed by me at this point, but it's fun to make videos on there for your art and just being goofy. So I'm kind of everywhere if you need to reach out. And we'll be sure to link your handles in the description below. Well, Sarah, I want to thank you so much for everything you do in the local art culture that we have here in St. Andrews and for being your awesome, authentic self. And thank you so much for meeting with me here today on such short notice. I wish you all the best. And until next time, keep St. Andrews salty. Thanks. This week's old news segment was published in the St. Andrews Bay News this week in history in 1920. I think this one draws a parallel to now because... Back then, the citizens saw the potential on the horizon and were excited about investing in the area, much like folks are now. Hope y'all enjoy this one. St. Andrew's Awakening It is evident, even to our most irrational pessimist, that St. Andrew's is awaking from its Rip Van Winkle sleep and is preparing to take the position in this section that its natural advantages warrant. Projects are taking form that means much to our little city by the sea. The World War has brought about conditions that have roused dormant possibilities and led to a study of what can and should be done here in the way of profitable development. And right now is the time for everyone to give their aid to the utmost in bringing our latest talents and capital. We have the men and the means to start important enterprises. All that is needed is to set the ball rolling in an executive initiative This must be forthcoming. Private investment must be preceded by or carried on in connection with municipal investment. The latter may take the form of public improvements or in securing publicity for the purpose of obtaining capital and new citizens and aiding in every possible lawful method in the promotion of such industries as we may secure for St. Andrews. The country is just now full of idle money. Its possessors are now looking for profitable investments. St. Andrews offers the opportunity for each such investment. What our people must do is bring the money and the opportunity together. And now is the accepted time to do this. Let the country know that St. Andrews is awake and on the job. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to Season 2, Episode 4 of the St. Andrews Jezebel Podcast. A big thanks to everyone who came to the premiere of All the Colors by Jack and Jen last week. That was our most recent Salty Field Recordings episode. There will be more episodes of the Salty Field Recordings series to come. 
As always, if you'd like to support the podcast, please visit our coffee page where you can make a one-time donation. I'll post in the description below. Make sure you tell all your salty friends to follow us on Facebook so that they'll receive a notification every Thursday when episodes go live. If you liked our theme song, it was written by me and recorded by Dave Schwartz on the campus of Gulf Coast State College. The rest was written by me and recorded in my music room with the interviews recorded at Floriopolis. Till next time, keep St. Andrew salty. Red lipstick, so thick, and a push-up bra. Tramp stamp, stretch marks, and a lacy thong, cause she's a Jezebel. St. Andrew Jezebel, cause she's a Jezebel.